Hollow Race fans. Uh, today we're going to put together a Viper V1 chassis. Um, several people have asked, you know, what are some of the finer points to putting a car together. Uh, it's really not very difficult, uh, and we'll run through it. Um, as you see, I have everything out here laid out, all the basic parts that are required, and I'll just go through these steps as I build up cars. The first thing I do generally is put the guide pin in. Um, I'll sometimes put maybe a drop of oil on that guide pin so it slides in the chassis easier. And there we go. And I usually have a, a pair of flat nose pliers that'll grab that pin and give you the leverage that you need. The next thing is going to be the front axle. Pop that thing in like that. Put that back on. Get it adjusted. Now, to get the O-rings to seat good, I'll also take maybe and just put a little bit of oil on those hubs because these O-rings are quite small and they fit kind of tight. Spin them around and look at make sure they run true. Looking pretty good. All right, next will be shoe hangers. These are silver plated and I always put a small tweak on that bottom part of the window just just a little bit of a bend. I don't know if you can see that or not. But just a little bit of a forward bend and I think that helps keep the heel of the shoe in. About like that. Pop that in here. Pop that in here. My big old fingers don't have problems on this one. There we go. All right. Next thing I want to do is drill for the rear axle retaining pins. A lot of the ready to runs don't have this, but I'll show you how I do it. All right, uh, drilling for the rear axle retaining pins uh, for me is a two-step process. I start off with an O20 and make sure the hole is straight and then I'll chase it with an O25 and this bit isn't as sharp as it could be but it does the job. And I'll chase that with a 25 What I found with the 25, if you try to do it in one step, the uh, the dimples, um, the way the dimples are formed in the back, they do better when you when you use an O20 to self-center that hole. All right, so there we have. The holes. Then I'll get the pens, which these are typical. Let's see what these are here. Uh, it says here number 37, size 17, 1 and 1 16th nickel plated steel pens. It's kind of a hard pen. So you got to cut them to length. And then we'll get our Dremel with a cutoff wheel and we'll point them up. So we got our pins formed and pointed up. I take and grab that pin like that and that gives me something to get some leverage on to put
push it into that chassis hole because those holes are still kind of tight. Which is what you want. And there we have it. We've got rear axle retaining pins. Alright, we're going to get down to putting the rest of the car together now. One of the things that I do sometimes is check the gauss readings on the motor magnets. And I always try to get the, uh, the strongest edges facing the, facing the track. Uh, this particular set of magnets, that side's pretty strong. That side's stronger. So I'm going to take a mark and mark that one as a strong side. And let's see if we can determine with the other one which one's stronger there for the white magnet. That one's showing 16. So I think that's Put that side down. All right. We have one of our new end bells. It's already been tweaked and reamed. Uh, all the steps have been taken on that. Put our bulkhead on. We're going to use one of our new two and a half ohm armatures. We're going to build a uh, kind of an outlaw car here with level four motor magnets and uh, level ten traction magnets. We have a standard end bell tool that goes in and spreads the brush arms so we can insert the motor. That. Now we're going to put the white magnet on the right side and we're going to put our marks facing down because that's the strongest edges. Right now here we have a scale engineering rear bushing uh, just for G style platforms. All right. All right, we're going to push the motor down into the motor box and there's a couple of little steps that we do to make sure it's done right. You get it all lined up and I take and get the hangers out of the way so the end bell can go down and get that thing seated to where the bunny ears on the end bell are ready to go. Now we've made a special tool and you could make one too or you could use some kind of uh, uh, pry but you have to get the bunny ears started behind the hanger and it's just a matter of getting something and moving it. Now once you get to that stage and the bushings in place, bam, we're in. Okay? And you may look at how things are. I get something here and kind of wiggle the back of that to make sure we don't have too much. Now for this particular example, it probably is a little excessive play in the back of that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this motor back out and probably put a 10,000 spacer in there uh, to take up that slack. Alright, uh, I decided that it really needed about 15 thousandths worth of spacing so we have just a little bit of perceptible play which I think is about right. And now we'll put the motor magnets in. I'm going to generally load it up in high down force which in this particular case the faces, which is the part that faces down to the track, I check by putting them to the side of the car. And then there's a notch on one end of the magnet. That notch needs to engage in the receiving notch of the chassis. If you have to force these magnets in, you've done something wrong. Right? Then I place the clip on and I look from the back and make sure 
that everything is lined up perfectly and get that clip on us and then I'll check and make sure I'll even look real close to make sure that the, uh, the arc is down on top of the, the bushing double check everything to make sure everything's right looks right feels right All right, so that's that and then I'll put the pinion gear on I have a standard pinion tool and that's in let's put some electrics in there that will give us now on the shoes you can just pop the shoes in normally I like to put a bend on the front of my shoes just to hold them on a little bit more and bend them over like that so these flat nose pliers come in handy for all kinds of different things now for the Viper chassis feed that shoe in from the underside get it right up lay it down take your tweezers or something and just poke that shoe right underneath the hanger feed it in get it positioned poke it in. Now I keep 9 volt batteries around. Sounds pretty good. Let's give it a little bit of oil. So you can see how our clip allows you to oil that back bushing very very easily. Interesting feature we put into that clip. Thank you Dan. Sounds pretty good. Check this on our power supply. Give it about nine volts. See how it sounds. Wow, fast car. All right, so we're nearly done. Um, I took the liberty of already assembling a rear axle set, standard Viper splined axle set, gears, uh, gear saver. Uh, double flange rims, super tires B. Make sure my spacing, my spacers are in place. I need to reposition the pinion gear just a little bit. So we bring our tool back. Pry that in there. Bring that back just a little bit. Just a little bit of side, just a perceptible side play, which is good. At this stage, I'll also check, I'll look at the back wheels and make sure that they're running true, and they seem to be. And we'll get something to push the pins in with, some type of flat object. Now these pins a lot of times go in very, very tight, which is good, but if you push them in real hard, you may get some uneven pressure across the back for your pro racer. So I'll just go back and pull that pin out just a little bit to, to make sure that it's not pushed really, really hard against the chassis there. Now one of the things that you need to note, when you drill these holes, do not drill into this piece up in here. It is not required. Okay. That pin does not have to go into this piece. It just has to protrude just enough to keep the axle from popping out in an accident. And even if the pin's only coming halfway through that space, the axle is not going to come out. So you don't have to drill all the way in and think you've got to, like you're drilling oil to China or something, to, to drill all the way into that. It's not, not required. All right, so I think we have a complete car. Give that rear axle a little bit of oil front axle. I'm going to put it on my setup block and take a look at it. Um, a lot of times I'll use a flashlight so I can see how much daylight is coming through. Now I'm setting this car up really low because we've got a routed track here so it doesn't need to be set up high like you might for a Tommy track or you know something else that's got a lot of downforce. Um, a Brad Bowman track, so it's probably you know medium downforce track. All right, so we got daylight from the bottom of the car, 
Um, so the next thing we'll do is check it. Now one of the things too when you when you have a good setup block is you kind of move the car back and forth and make sure the pickup shoes are not hanging up. Now I'm moving the chassis back and forth a little bit and you can see that the shoes are staying in place and the chassis is just rocking back and forth. That's the way you want it. That means you've got heel and toe pressure. Okay. If something's wrong and they're not uh, free to move back and forth like that, then you've bent the hanger too much or something else is wrong or you got too much spring pressure and you need to go back and figure out why those shoes aren't floating. Right? They have to float if you want the, the best performance possible. Make sure the end bell is in slightly advanced, which it is, which means the driver's side will be down and when you have it flipped over then it'll be up. So I think now we can take a few test laps here and see what we got. Okay we're going to run some base test laps. We have a car that's got level 4 motor magnets, level 10 traction magnets, and a 6 ohm armature. Um, it's kind of a I'm not sure if you would call it club stock, but uh, some some clubs run a car like this. They're fairly easy to drive. Alright, so as you can see, you got pretty good speed. There's not a lot of driving that has to be done with them because you've got a lot of magnets and not a lot of motor. So now we're going to try the car that we just built, same basic setup, except we have our 2.5 ohm outlaw armature in it. Ooh, got some speed to it. Alright, uh, the tires are a little dirty, so I cleaned the tires and we'll continue running some laps. So it looks pretty good. Um, check the temperature. Yeah, it's a little warm. Probably could stand to raise the car up some, but uh, there you have it. Um, basics on building a car.